Okay, start stall. Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we're working on some old American vintage iron, well, 1992 Ford F-150, 5 liter V8, and customer complaint was on the original throttle body, uh, one of the coolant lines just completely rusted off. The truck was running okay, you know, uh, except for it just lost the coolant. Okay, so they went on eBay and bought a replacement throttle body. I'll show you where it lives. So right here. And then the truck started having a problem with the idle speed. The engine just races up. Uh, the shop owner said that when they unplug the, the IAC, then it comes back down. But again, when you're driving around, you can't control the idle with the IAC unplugged. So they were going to install like a toggle switch to, I don't know, control the idle. But I'm like, well, let me take a look at it. This will make for a cool video. Uh, what they did was they actually installed the original IAC and the original TPS sensor down there onto the replacement throttle body. No change. So, got the scanner plugged in. Varus with the adapters, Ford 1B. And let's just see what, what happens here. So, correct vehicle is loaded by the VIN. And... <laughs> I don't think we're, we're going to get live data on a 92, and this is an automatic, and it does have air conditioning. Okay. Ah, we do have data display. Well, let's look at the codes first. Tion engine off, self-test. Uh, uh, uh. Cycle key off, keys on, continue. Okay, let's see what it sets. So we got key on engine TP fuel injection pump lever sensor signal too high. Park neutral position. A clutch switch circuit failure, signal too high, EGR signal too low, end of list. Okay, interesting. I wonder what we'll see in the data display. Vehicle voltage to scanner too low. I'm just gonna start it up. Okay, start stall. Let me give it some gas here. Check engine light came on, okay. Let's let it let it idle here. So it'll establish communication, but I, I don't think on a 92 we can get live data. All right, so key on uh, engine run self-test uh, ran. We got two codes here, 98 and a 53. And the check engine light's flashing. One, two, three. <laughs> Shut off. Okay, very interesting. So 53 TP fuel injection pump, that's for a diesel, level, lever sensor signal too high. So it is fussing about the TPS sensor. Uh, DTC present failure modes, effect management, control, EPC circuit fault. Again, we can look these codes up, 98 and 53. But 53 is the one that has to do with the throttle body, and it's a three-wire... TPS sensor so we can definitely measure the voltage on there see if I don't think it has much adjustment in terms of being on the throttle body there but the angle of the throttle body meaning the throttle stop screw 
which is right here, can definitely have an effect. So we can actually look at the throttle stop screw on this one. You can see the tang is right here, and the TPS sensor is obviously on behind the linkage. So the cables pull this way. So I'm assuming What I don't like here is that the throttle actually stops, the plates stop before this tang reaches the stop screw because there's some play in the linkage. Okay, but let's get a measurement on those TPS wires. So there's a connector right down here. We can back probe that. Or right at the TPS, whichever is easier. I see a actually a strip wire right there, I don't know what that's all about we have to get a TPS reading and since we don't have live data we have to use a voltmeter or a scope alright here's a wiring diagram of the throttle position sensor three wires a common power, common ground and the signal is a gray and white um, let's just check all three and see what they do on the voltmeter. So on wire number one, I'm back probing on the harness side, 4.8 volts, and if we move the throttle, there's no change on that voltage. That must be the 5 volt reference. That looks to be okay. Let's move on to the next wire. Alright, wire number two is showing 40 millivolts, that must be a ground. We can easily check that just by feeding this wire test light from battery positive. So a test light will light if it finds a ground. Sure enough, it lights up. That is our ground. Third wire should be the interesting one, signal. Okay, third wire is exactly at five volts. So we definitely found a problem at the TPS sensor. It's just reading high all the time. No wonder the idle's messed up. So, my question is, is that black wire that's uh, frayed, is it basically detached from our TPS sensor? We don't have a good ground. It could be. But we can measure also on the harness side of our sensor. Make sure this connector is okay. So that must be the 5 volt reference, and the other one, the first one we had was the signal. Very interesting. Okay, so this is very cool. I'm on the signal wire. Sensor is unplugged, the TPS sensor. We're down at 30 millivolts. As soon as I plug this connector in, check out what happens to our signal voltage. Boom. It goes up to 4.9 volts. So bingo. Problem is with the TPS sensor, either the pigtail there, the ground is bad, or the sensor's installed improperly somehow. But let's uh, let's get the other TPS sensor out, we'll plug it in and see how it works. Da -da -da -da. So this TPS sensor plugged in reads 0 0.5 volts exactly on the money, and if I turn it with my pick, that voltage will increase. So the only thing I can thing to do right now is tear off this throttle body and put the other TPS sensor on. Too bad it lives on the bottom, not on the side or the top. It's kind of a pain, but we can just leave this, this one plugged in and see how the truck runs and see if that code clears out. Alright, so now let's start the truck with the good TPS sensor plugged in. It's not installed, but it should at least start and run with no check engine light and the idle should be normal. Now if I step on the gas, it, you can hear it obviously uh, <laughs> doesn't like that because it thinks the throttle's not opening. But if you slowly increase it, okay so we can test at least 
that the AC and this works and that works so the idle speed seems to be good let's uh, just run the key uh, engine run self test activate that so it's running the uh, Pressing release brake pedal, turning steering wheel 180 degrees, overdrive switch, uh, which I don't see. It is basically testing all the sensors. Um, it didn't get this far before. So now that it sees that the TPS sensor is in the right position when the throttle is released, it's actually running through the entire test which is good <laughs> that's what it wants so we need to install that sensor on the throttle body and then it should be in good shape I don't see why else it would be uh, fussing uh oh now it wants me to snap the throttle but we have no TPS sensor so we could uh <laughs> just manually turn the TPS sensor. That's not what happened there. Alright, here we go. Throttle not snapped, operator error, and then sensor out of range because, well, That's uh, because it wasn't attached to the throttle. So very interesting. Now we're getting a code 23, which has uh, TPS out of range. Check for misadjusted idle hard stop. Verify throttle plate is in normal closed position. C-tip idle speed control air bypass valve. TPS voltage at idle should be about 0 0.7 to 0 0.9 volts. Voltage should increase smoothly with throttle movement. Aha, uh -huh. so we're only at 0 0.5 and my suspicion with uh, the throttle stop screw not doing too much was actually, I would say, correct. So right now, our voltage on the TPS is 0 0.48. Excellent. Okay, so we'll install the good TPS and then adjust the throttle stop screw so our TPS voltage is in range. So I want to install this TPS sensor on the original throttle body and see what the voltage was when the screws line up on this one. So you can see the voltage is about one volt. Let me uh, make sure the screw holes are lined up right about there. 1.1 volts. Now that's not 0 0.7 to 0 0.9 but the truck didn't have any issues before and this throttle stop screw has not been messed with as you can see right there the, mar the paint is still on it it's, it closes nice and positive and there's definitely a gap in the throttle plates when it's fully closed so However, this was adjusted, that's, well, actually, you can see that the throttle bores used to close a little more, so I'm not sure if what happened here was this rod bent. Yep, you can definitely see it used to close a little more, so maybe someone actually messed with this, and that would bring the spec to 0 0.7 to 0 0.9. Cool. All right, so I talked to the shop owner about the whole situation. So A, TPS sensor is junk. You gotta put the other one on the throttle body. Problem number two is it needs to be adjusted to 0 0.8 volts when the gas is off and it's at the throttle stop screw. Why is this one at 1.1? Well, we see that the bore shows that the throttle plates used to close a little more and that's probably because this little bracket was slightly bent when they have to grind off 
the attachment for the automatic transmission cable you can see this tang is slightly bent it's not like a right angle anymore <laughs> so not too surprising that these throttle plates are now a little bit more open so the TPS sensor is saying it's a little high last thing we can do is fix the TPS at 0 0.8 and make sure that we have no key on engine off codes All right, so I fixed the TPS sensor in this position, 0 0.75 volts. The computer should be happy with that. Let's do the key on engine off test one more time. So with the TPS fixed at 0 0.75 volts, we do a key on engine run self test and we don't have the code 23 anymore. We just have 44 thermactor air system, no one cares. And operator air throttle not snapped. Well, I didn't push the throttle because TPS sensor is not on the throttle body. So this truck is diagnosed. Uh, the shop here is going to follow my instructions and put the good TPS sensor on that throttle body and adjust the linkage so the TPS is at 0 0.8 when your foot is off the gas. That's it. This truck is fixed. So thanks a lot for watching. Uh, these OBD1 trucks and cars, they'll, they usually take up more time than the OBD2s because you have to deal with all this stuff and no live data so but again same thought process you just have to have some patience and most shops these days they really don't even work on OBD1 stuff anymore they're just like yeah throw some parts at it and it doesn't fix it so let's put in a toggle switch yeah <laughs> I like them to get them right so thanks a lot for watching we'll see you next time bye bye